What is up guys, this is Cash with Cash Dow Cars and this is the complete guide to installing a Miata roll bar. Let's get started. The first step is to jack up your car and put it on some jack stands. Once it's up, take the rear wheels off. Then take the seats out to give you some more room. There are four 14mm bolts which hold the seats in. The next step is to remove the carpeting. To do this, I used a pry tool to remove all the clips which hold it in. Once that's all set, the upper and lower sound deadening could be removed. Next, remove this metal piece that covers the plastic covers on both sides of the car. It's held on by a screw and a 10mm bolt. Then remove the fasteners for the plastic cover. This consists of one clip and one 10mm bolt. Next, pop off the clip that locks the back of the plastic trim. Then this weather strip could be pulled out. Now the plastic trim piece is all set to be removed, but it's held on by a clip, so unclip that before you remove it. Next, remove the metal package tray cover. To do this, go around and undo all the 10mm fasteners. Once they're all out, this piece could be removed from the car. Now that that piece is removed, there's some more sound deadening that you could take out. I freed this up using a scraper. Then you could use your hand to pop off this plastic seatbelt cover. Once they're off, you could use a 17mm wrench or socket to remove the bolts. Then remove the seatbelt reels by taking out the 17mm bolt that's on the front side of the seatbelt tower. Then remove the seatbelt reel. If you're like us and putting 5 point harnesses in the car, also disconnect the seatbelt at the lower mount. Next remove the splash guards within the wheel well. These fasteners are 10mm. Now that you've got everything stripped from the car, it's time to actually install the roll bar. First test fit your bar to make sure it looks like it's gonna fit. Also, this will give you a good idea of what you're gonna have to trim or move to get the bar to fit properly. On our car, we had to unclip and adjust the wiring harness on the driver's side. This freed up space for the roll bar and also prevented the wires from getting squished by the feet on the roll bar. We also unclipped the wire that runs across the car and where it starts to go towards the back. Then we test fit the roll bar again, relocating anything that was in the way. Different years and trim levels might have different things to relocate, so keep that in mind when you're installing your bar. For our car, we had to pop out even more clips that held wires in. Then we had to carefully adjust them to get them above the roll bar mounting brackets. Be careful that you don't pinch any wires. Once you've got the bar sitting properly, put in the upper bolt on the forward mounting bracket. This will get the roll bar roughly where it'll sit when it's installed. Once it's in place, you can mark the other holes which you'll have to drill. You could try to use a sharpie, but I found that using an ice pick tool and scratching the paint underneath marked the holes better. Be Once everything's clearly marked, take out the bolts and take out the roll bar. Now it's time to drill the holes. To start, we center punch the holes. This will ensure that your holes are perfectly accurate and that the drill doesn't wander off. Then you could drill the holes for the lower bracket. To do this, start with a small drill bit. Next, we use the step drill bit to increase the size until the bolt fit through. You could also use normal metal cutting drill bits if that's all you have. Once you've got those holes in place, it's time to move on to the rearward upper mounting bracket. On our car, we had to use a file to open up a hole that was already in the chassis to fit the most forward bolt through. Then you could use a center punch to give you a start point for the next hole back. Then you could drill that hole, starting with a small sized bit and stepping up. The next hole that's the farthest back is very hard to drill from the top. To fix this, we put the roll bar in to line up the hole and drilled it from the bottom. This means putting in the bolts and the backing plates on the forward bracket. This is also a great time to make sure that those holes line up with the bracket. If they don't, you could use some sort of lever to tweak the position of the bar or you could open up the holes more. Once the bolts with the washer are through the mounting bracket, you could put on the backing plate followed by a washer followed by the nut. Then drop the bolts through for the rear mounting bracket and put on that backing plate. For now, just tighten all these bolts by hand. That way if anything needs to move a little bit to line up, it could. With everything still loose, you could put in the spacer where the seatbelt tower is. Then you could drop through the long bolt and tighten that down by hand. Once all your bolts are in the can be in right now, go ahead and tighten them all up. 
With everything tightened, you could center punch the last hole you need to drill using the backing plate as a guide. Once you're sure it's pretty much in the right place, go ahead and drill the hole. Once that hole is drilled, you could drop through the bolt and put the nut on. Then go ahead and torque all your bolts. Boss Frog recommends torquing your bolts to 50 pound feet if they're grade 8s. Once everything is torqued, your bar is structurally installed and it's time to start reassembly. To start this, I secured all the wires, reclipping them back into place and then taping them down. This will make sure nothing will move and get pinched and it'll also help avoid rattles. Then resecure any wiring harnesses if you unhook them. The next step is to cut the metal cover tray to fit with the roll bar in. Boss Frog has a pattern for this, but we cut out more of the tray to make the installation easier. We ended up cutting our straight back rather than cutting out the recommended notches. Once everything's cut out, you can install the metal package tray. Once it's properly situated, go ahead and reinstall the bolts. After that, it's time to reinstall the plastic trim. This has to be modified and cut first so it fits around the roll bar. You could find patterns online to get you started, but basically you have to cut the plastic so it fits around the roll bar when it's bolted in. Keep cutting it and sanding it until it fits neatly around the roll bar and looks good. Once everything is good, test fit both pieces one last time and then bolt and clip everything back in. Then you could slide the weather strip in. After that, put the metal cap back on that goes over the plastic trim and the weather strip. Then the carpets could be put back in. In our car, we didn't put the sound deadening back in because we were trying to save as much weight as possible. I'm not sure about how big of a difference this will really make, but if you're worried about noise, put the sound deadening back in. The final step after getting the carpeting in is to put the seats back in. Now your roll bar is completely installed. Here are some shots of my finished bar. I realize I didn't show you how to reinstall the seat belts in your car, but that's because we're installing 5 point harnesses in ours. Once we get those belts installed in our car, I'll have a video, so stay tuned. If you have any questions or comments about this video, leave them below and I'll do my best to help you out. Don't forget to subscribe for more Miata videos like this. As always, thank you for watching.